All right. So first off, I want to thank you guys for all for joining us. My name's Adam Fanjoy. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Golf Minor Baseball. Um, joining us on this call, we have a few other board members who will get some opportunities to speak at, throughout the night. Um, we're gonna try and make this uh, as quick as we can, but a lot of tonight is about information. Um, so if you have a question, if you're wondering about things, we're gonna do our best to answer those questions. We don't have all the answers, um, but we definitely wanted to take this opportunity to present some of the information um, that we have, some of, the, some of our plans going forward and how we plan on adjusting, depending on sort of some of the regulations uh, that change for us as, as we progress towards our, our opening date. Um, obviously it's a, a year like no other. Um, so we're trying to build off of anything that we can, but it fully is our intention to have a baseball season uh, this year. And judging by the turnout, which has been awesome already, we're sitting at 93 participants. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start off with a few sort of names that you need to know and introductions. Um, and then we'll go through sort of our, our plan. So Jeff, if you wanna pull it up for me, that'd be great. All right, so again, this is for our parents in our house league program. Uh, we do see some coaches have, who have been on. We've already held a coaches meeting. So tonight's plan is to look through some of our main contacts uh, within GMBA to talk about our, our house league season plan, to go over some of our COVID protocols and expectations some of the next steps that we have going forward, and then we'll end with sort of a, a big question period. So anything that you want, um, please feel free to ask us. So some of our main contacts that we have, and, and there, there I am there as, as acting as the House League Chair. My name is Adam Fanjoy. Um, my email is again, first.last at gmba.ca. We also have Jeff Hoffman, um, who's not only the junior commissioner, he's also the president of golf minor baseball. And we have Heather McPherson, who is also a board member, and she is our senior commissioner in House League. Um, so these are also good point people to use if you do have any questions throughout the season. Um, but on top of these people, we have more specific who you'll probably have more contact with as the season goes on, and that would be our division conveners. Um, so at the 5U division, we have Vanessa, 6U is Nick, 7U is Corey. Eight and nine you, we're still looking for uh, a convener. So if you are interested, please reach out to us. Um, and we'd be happy to have you um, help us out in that area. Our, our 10 you is Chad, or 10 and 11 you is Chad, 12 you is Lori, 13 you is Liz, 15 you Jim, and 19 you Kevin. We are going through this quickly. This, this presentation will be available on our website later this evening. So you can come back to it and reference any of the material. That's there. We are also recording this session, um, so you can see it on the GMBA YouTube channel if you'd like to go back or if somebody misses a little piece of it. So those are our conveners. These people are responsible for uh, the planning and the organization of our teams. Um, they're gonna be the contacts for the coaches. Uh, they're also be somebody that you can reach out to uh, as a first step to get some answers to some of the questions you have. But at any time, please feel free to reach out to anybody on the board, uh, myself or any of the commissioners. So our season plan for this year, what we've come up with, and you may see some dates that we've thrown out and we've changed. So we've actually switched to a week plan. And the way we're, we're targeting things is based on a three weeks to open. And part of the reason for this is we wanna make sure that our athletes get into that training aspect a little bit before they get into straight gameplay. So what you can see there as we begin our week one, um, and are anticipated based on what we've heard. And if you heard the announcement today, there was some talk about maybe it moves a little bit earlier, which would be awesome. Um, and all we'll do is just shift this plan forward as the weeks go. But our target date for, for stage one will be June 14th through the 20th. And we're calling that spring training. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're gonna get the players out on the field and have them just get back into some um, basic drills to get warmed up, to get their bodies used to being in motion. And at the end of that week, we're gonna end off that week with our select tryout. So over the weekend, um, again, if we do open on June 14th, uh, that would be June 19th and 20th, those will be our select tryouts. In the second week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into our team training. So this will be the opportunity for the teams to get together and, and they'll be working on um, different specific skills to their age group and their division. 
We have confirmed with um, Guelph Wellington Public Health that we are able to do two groups of 10 people on a diamond. Um, so we will be utilizing the infield and the outfield for these, these training sessions. And those two groups will not move. So they, the group that starts in the outfield will remain in the outfield. The group that's in the infield will remain in the infield. That leads us into the third week. And what we'll do for the third week, for some of our divisions, we, we've reached out to Peak Headhouse and they will be providing some specific training for our 10U, our 11U, um, and our 12 and 13U divisions. The other divisions will continue with their teams-based training. Um, so we've got a couple different plans that are in place for those. Again, groups of 10, this includes coaches and players, and they will alternate this time. So the group that started the week before in the outfield, they'll be in the infield and will vice versa. So that's how our plan is going to be. Um, our hope for this is that we will get to this as soon as possible. As you can see, we do have the target date of June 14th, which leads us to when do we play games? And our, our target for playing games would be in our fourth week, which that date, if we go on the fourth, based off the 14th, is July 5th. Okay. We are anticipating that under stage two is when we will be allowed to have our leagues begin. Now, we are not quite sure if we're going to have a limit on league size. Last year at the rep level, Guelph Minor Baseball uh, did run some of our rep teams in leagues, and they were limited to a 50-player bubble. So we're not sure. It hasn't been clarified yet if that is going to be the case for our house league season. We do have plans to accommodate that. Um, we're hoping that we don't. It provides a little bit more of a, a better competition and a more meaningful season. However, if we are limited to that 50-player uh, bubble, uh, we will make sure that we have plans in place for that. At all times, we have to make sure that we are following Baseball Ontario's return to sport protocols. So these are available on the Baseball Ontario website. There's also links off of the Guelph Minor Baseball website. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the specifics around what we have to follow as we return to play um, in a little bit. But again, everything that we do will follow both public health and return to sport protocols. The other thing that's of importance for our start time is because we are push it back later than normal, um, we are going to extend the season later. Our goal will still be to end all of our divisions by Labor Day. Um, and the two exceptions to that are uh, the rally cap, because that's only typically a 10 week program. So that'll end before, and the 19 new division, uh, because most of those players are heading back to school or hopefully heading back to school. Um, as they go in. So that'll end before Labor Day. So that's sort of our plan, a very quick overview of how we plan on getting our players back into baseball. So I'm now gonna turn you over to uh, Jeff Hoffman, who's gonna go through some of the, the highlights of our return to sport and some of our COVID protocols that we have to follow as part of Guelph Minor Baseball. Awesome, thanks Adam. Hey, thanks everybody for, as Adam said, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, it's great. It's great to uh, to be here with you, and we're really excited to be hopping back on the field. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks max, and, and perhaps even sooner. So, again, thanks for taking the time to be with us tonight, and uh, looking forward to an awesome, awesome baseball season. So, uh, COVID nineteen has certainly changed the way we do lots of things in life. Of course, I think I don't tell anybody that, um, and and it's certainly uh, changed uh, 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 you know how we play baseball and, so, and some of the things that we'll do around on the baseball diamond to you know to maximize you know player safety. Um, and so a couple pieces here. We'll start with numbers here. So all of the team events we run, practices, games when we get there, are all, are all uh, the first place we start is, is the, the, number, the person limit set forth by the province of Ontario. And so as we anticipate, as Adam mentioned, stage one, we anticipate that will be, uh, we'll be, have to be in groups of 10 or less. And how that would work, as Adam mentioned, is, uh, is you'd have a team practicing, half the players would be on the infield practicing with a couple of coaches, half the teams in the outfield practicing, half the team in the outfield practicing with a couple of coaches. Those two groups stay separate for the length of the practice and then and then go home. So we're able, so that's how the first couple of weeks will run um, in those groups of 10. Some, some players in the infield, some in the outfield with uh, coaches, and they will not uh, come together. As we move along, we anticipate that, that that will change. We know that will change from the, from the phased opening of the province and uh, we'll be able to, to get to, uh, to, to our games together. Um, for parents, this is a, a big piece for you, for, for parents, um, as we uh, as we get going here. Just like we do with lots of stuff, uh, our ask of you and uh, Baseball Ontario's ask of you is that you screen your child before you uh, before you attend uh, attend any sort of baseball event, any practice or any game. 
The screening tool that Baseball uh, Ontario uses is just the province of Ontario screening tool, the one that you've used probably for school, you know, lots, you know, when we were out going to school in person, right? That's the, that's the screening tool that, uh, that you use. And if, uh, and if you don't pass, a, if your child doesn't pass a screening tool, they got to stay home, okay? Um, and, uh, and so just please do that. So that's, that's what we use. And then, we, and we've used that tool versus other tools because that's the one that can change from time to time. The province does update their, their screener and, uh, and that way we're, we're fully, you know, uh, yeah, using the, the, the proper screening tool as well. So uh, that's the tool that you use to screen your players. So please do so before you attend any practice or, uh, or any game. Other piece that will happen is attendance. And so we will ask you, we were, we're gonna ask you before you come or while you're there at the, at the, at the game or practice is to, is to fill out an online attendance form. And this will be a form that you're able to uh, 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 allow us and allow public health really to do contact tracing should, uh, should there be any sort of a, a COVID-19 positive case. And so we're, we're just firming up that process entirely how that's gonna look, we'll get that over to you. Um, but um, as you attend any practice or any game, you'll need to just to fill up that, that uh, attendance tool so we can uh, follow up appropriately uh, should, we, uh, should we need to. Um, shared equipment. So one of the, one of the pieces around uh, return to sport guidelines from, from Baseball Ontario is that players are encouraged to bring their own equipment. And, uh, and, and if we do need to share anything, it needs to be disinfected between users or, or, or between groups. And so for us on the housing front, that often, re, uh, often is bats. So we do, every team has a, a set of bats that'll be in, in, the, in the coach's bag. And so if players are sharing bats on the team, we can do that. We just need to, to, to uh, disinfect those bats between, uh, between players. But, um, but we, GMBA does have a limited supply of bats as well. And, uh, and so if your child, uh, if you don't have a bat for your child and you'd like them to have their own bat, please reach out to, to Dave Shapka, who's our equipment manager at that email address there, equipment at gmba.ca. And, uh, and Dave can connect with you. And if we still have some bats left, he'll, uh, he, can, he can try to get you one to, to help your child out. If we need to share, we can do that by disinfecting, but that's, uh, we do have some that we would be happy to, uh, to, to, uh, to pass on to the players for sure. Other piece around uh, around the around uh, uh, sanitizing is just um, in in general uh, hand hygiene is a big part of the uh, the protocol. So when your child's at practice, uh, they will be asked to sanitize their hands at the beginning of practice and then every thirty minutes until the end of practice. Um, and then again, once again, at the end of practice before they they leave practice, and the coaches will, will work uh, work with your your child to to make that happen. And every team is provided sanitizer um, uh, for this purpose. And then during games, how it works is uh, coaches or players. Uh, they have to sanitize their hands before uh, the game and then every half inning uh, right up to the end and then at the, again at the end of the game. Um, and so that's a big part of the protocol. Hand sanitizing is, the, uh, is, is a big piece of that. So 30 minutes, every 30 minutes during a practice and every half inning during the game. And then any sort of high touch services, uh, those are regular, you know, we want to be sanitizing those regularly. Coaches will do that and they've got access to sanitizer, microfiber wipes, those types of things to, uh, to, to, uh, to do what they need to do um, around that. Uh, social distancing, another big part of the, the sort of protocols, things that we're, obviously we're all doing lots of our lives right now. So, and baseball is a sport where you naturally social distance. A lot of the stuff will happen as part of a part of a practice or as part of a game. But you know um, how to work as coaches will work with players to really encourage that you know they do their best to maintain the minimum about two meters apart uh, whenever possible. And as part of the protocols, one of the things that that we try to do is avoid the use of dugouts. So instead of you know when we go to a baseball game and all twelve players are sitting on the bench together, right? Uh, you know when they're waiting for their turn to hit. Um, the bench area might get used for a couple of players on there, so those are the players getting ready to hit, but we really encourage each of you to, to bring with your child, uh, bring, have your child bring to, to their games and to their practice their own lawn chair. And we'll spread them out in lots of that space around the diamond, and that'll be sort of their home, their home area where they can leave their bag and their water and their, and their, and their bat and stuff. And, um, and we can make sure that those, are, those spaces are distance um, and really sort of maximize our distance while we're, while we're at, our, at our games. and. Uh, at our practices, okay? And then uh, with respect to face masks, um, face masks are, are, can be worn their entire time while they're with us um, um, at a practice or at a game, but these are the situations where they have to be worn as part of the uh, protocol. So uh, off the field, so you know, when you're arriving to practice, you arrive into the game and you're walking up, um, players should have their masks on, coaches will have their masks on, and that includes when they're in the bench area or in their launch area, you know, kind of waiting to hit, um, you know, or, or if you're in the older divisions and it's, that, it's your turn to sit for one of your innings, um, you know, uh, wearing your, your, your uh, mask while you're, while you're not playing. Um, but if uh, for any of the divisions where you're holding runners at first base, so often that's a first baseman uh, on a leadoff, um, the first baseman or the fielder who's holding the runner, often the first baseman will need to wear a mask. 
any uh, anybody who's performing first aid, um, uh, unless they're part of the parent, parent the player's bubble, often we'll we'll ask parents to come help us with first aid because uh, you know. Um, 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 but if it's a coach performing it, they'll throw their mask. They'll make sure they have their mask on before they're performing any sort of sort of sort of first aid. And then coaches uh, have to wear their face coverings too um, whenever they're approaching another, another participant as well when they're uh, with uh, when they uh, get uh, less than that two meters apart as well. Uh, other pieces here, and this is some of the fun stuff, you know. So, hey, no spitting, that's a, but no sunflower seeds, unfortunately, no gum. I know, like, no sunflower seeds, a baseball diamond. What do you do, right? Like, but yes, unfortunately, the protocols are no sunflower seeds, no gum, can't share food, can't share water. I think about some of our younger divisions where, you know, you might, you might, hey, let's, let's bring a bunch of popsicles to the, uh, to the diamond, those types of things. Can't do that stuff uh, under these COVID protocols, which is, which isn't, which is too bad. Um, uh, no sharing of coolers. And then things like handshakes, high fives, fist bumps, um, you know, some of these things will probably just happen naturally from time to time, but we're really like, that's one of the things, we, you know, as we try to keep our, our distance as much as we can, are also part of the, uh, part of the guidelines here. And I think that the, the advice for coaches is just we're, we're working with, with, um, with families just to, uh, you know, and players just to sort of educate, you know, um, and, and do our best as we work through all these, uh, all these, uh, all these guidelines. Okay. So let's uh, let's talk about a couple of what if uh, what if scenarios here around around COVID nineteen. So one of the questions: is If I fail a screener or I'm exposed to a positive case, what do I do? So as we said, we um, please stay home and sort of seek any further direction that you would get from public health. They're certainly the ones who who know what's uh, what's best to do. And if you are a high risk contact for somebody, or your family is, or your child is, um, you know, uh, with, a, with a high risk contact or somebody with, as, who's uh, with a positive case. Uh, the player uh, will be asked to refrain from baseball activities for at least 14 days, and um, and that, that that again that information will come in through, to us on, or to you often through uh, through public health. Um, if you're diagnosed with COVID-19, or your child's diagnosed with COVID-19, really ask you to stay home until they're cleared to return uh, by public health, and then the evidence of clearance um, that has to be sent over to us um, at uh, at that email address there, hostly at gmba.ca, and and. Uh, I want to assure you that that certainly any health information is something that we we take really seriously and will be held in the strictest confidence. But we do require that information before any any uh, any of our players can re uh, return to the uh, return to the team. Uh, okay, and uh, what if a positive case happens in our program? Um, you know what would happen there? So a couple of points. That one is you know at Guelph Minor Base, we're certainly confident that um, that you know if we're able to follow these protocols um, and adhere to, to the guidelines. We can we can really we still provide a real safe and fun experience for everybody. But should should a positive case occur, uh, what, what where we come in at GMBA is we just work closely with Wellington Dufferin Guelph uh, Public Health, and uh, we'll identify the, the high risk contacts. Public Health will do their notification that they, that they normally do, and then Public Health takes a sort of lead on this and they they move it forward, um, uh, and uh, and take it sort of out of our hands at Guelph Minor Baseball, and they they do uh, they do their part. Um, uh, should uh, should there be a positive case within a team uh, in, in this case here, um, and then and and then on here, Steph Steph Mochuk, who's our VP of Rep, really lots of experience in here is uh, sort of our lead on this here. Steph's just working tonight, couldn't be on our call here. So Steph's email is there. Please feel free to reach out to Steph or any of us. We're happy to to give you a bit more info on this here, or if you want to talk about this uh, this any uh, any further. And if you got questions in chat, happy to answer those as we get to that part as well. So I think that's it for my part, Adam. I'll flip, I'll flip it back to you and uh, we'll talk about next steps. Awesome. I was just uh, ripping off as many answers to the questions that I, I could get there while Jeff was talking. Um, thank you, Jeff. Uh, any questions that we didn't get to, I will come back to. We will have a question session at the end. Um, so I apologize if I didn't answer and feel free to ask um, as, as we go on here. We'll, we'll definitely come back to it. So some of our next steps. Um, for you as parents, uh, what we're asking is make sure that you understand the Baseball Ontario return to sport protocols. So there are some highlights that we pulled out for you. The document is available online. Oh, Jeff, we lost our share there. Um, so just make sure we, we take the opportunity to review that. You can access it off of the, the Golf Minor Baseball website. Um, so that's going to be really, really important. And, and Jeff's also going to show you directly on the OBA. They do have the On Deck app, um, which is something that you can get on iOS and Android. And all of this information that we're talking about, the return to sport protocols are right there, as Jeff's showing us here. Um, so you can go in and the protocols are listed right there. Um, so there's lots of good information. And as, as they do update, um, we do see it. Um, it does update sort of on the website automatically. 
So making sure that our children understand the changes that they may see and what role they keep in playing and keeping everyone safe on the baseball diamond. For a lot of our players, there are different rules on a baseball diamond than there has been at school. And for a lot of them, they've been out of school for a while. So there, there's some things that we need to be, be cognizant of and um, we need to work together to make sure everybody stays safe. Making sure that your family and, and your players are familiar with the self-screening aspect and what that looks like and what to go through, okay? Um, when it comes down to it, if players aren't feeling well, please just keep them home. Um, and then making sure that city baseball fields are open. Okay, so when we use the fields, they currently, all the fields in Guelph currently are open, um, but we must follow the gathering limits of five people currently. Okay, so again, what to expect in early June, you should be hearing from your children, uh, for hearing about what team your child has been placed on. So that should be happening within the next week or so. Um, you should be getting that information coming up very soon. Um, by mid-June, we're gonna have those uniforms available. Uh, we were speaking to our supplier about plans and stuff like that. So that's coming really, really soon. Um, so that's gonna be mid-June. And as we go forward from there, what we're asking for our families this year is really to connect with us through our social media accounts, right? So we do have presence on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, our website, and also our YouTube channel. So this is where we do communicate a lot of information. It, it seems to have been an effective way that we found um, to connect. So if you aren't following us, please, if you if you want to, hop on, follow, and like us on, on those social medias. But also feel free to visit our website. Um, that's where we're going to be sharing all of our information. That's our opportunity. And even if you want to tag us, right, feel free to tag us in in, po in pictures that you're posting. Um, we'd love to see it on our website. All right, now comes the fun part. So we have questions. Um, and I'm sure as there was in the chat, there's gonna be lots of questions and that's fantastic. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is if you have a question, um, there is a raised hand function. If you want to, we will. I will gladly call on you. You can unmute your mic and we will answer your question. If you're not comfortable speaking and, you, and you'd prefer, you can simply type your question in the chat and we'll jump between both of them. Um, so again, the next little part of this session is all for any questions that you have, anything that we need clarified, um, and we'll do our best to find an answer for you. So I'm gonna quickly, all uh, right, Jessica, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Perfect, can you hear me okay? Yes, we gotcha. Yeah, excellent. First of all, I just want to thank all of you guys for your uh, commitment and support to get the, the kids out playing baseball. I know they're all super excited with the, the news of school not reopening. This kind of gives them that glimmer of hope. So thank you guys for all that you're doing. Um, I, I did just notice there's a lot of uh, chat, but I didn't know if the question had been asked about the pants exchange. Um, I was having a little bit of signal problem there too. So if I missed that, I apologize, but just the, the pants exchange. Yep, great, great question. Um, for, for uniform, and there was parts of it were answered. So uh, GMBA does provide a hat, a pair of pants, and a uniform shirt. The sizing for the shirts was collected uh, when players filled out their registration form. Uh, so that's what we will be using to make the shirt. We also have um, players will be able to select their number this year with a new thing that we've added. So these are, those shirts are going to be made. They are going to be made custom. Um, so the opportunity, I see the question in the chat, can they be exchanged? Um, we are working on a way to do that. There may be an additional cost. Um, so I, I encourage you, if you do, if you're worried about your shirt size, go up a size. Um, we do have a sizing chart on the, the website. Uh, and if you would like to change that, please reach out to um, I guess I'll take it, uh, either registration at gmba.ca or you can do it directly to me and I will make that adjustment. Uh, but if you are concerned, please do that in the next week or so because those numbers are going off to the, the printer very, very soon. Um, in terms of pants, the way that uniform for the seven U and up divisions is going to work is you will actually be picking up your uniform um, directly from our supplier, which this year is going to be hometown sports. So you'll be able to go in there and get a pair of pants and see if it fits. So you can do a direct exchange there if you want. Um, and if not, I mean, if we're, if the stores aren't open, um, they are doing sort of curbside drop-off exchange. Uh, so there's all kinds of plans in place for that to happen uh, to exchange if they don't fit properly. Uh, the hats are a uh, adjustable hat so they can be adjusted for any size that's needed. 
And Adam, if I could add in just on the pants too, the pants are different this year. We've changed our pants from what they were two years ago when we last had a house league season. And so um, if you got some some of those purple-ish pants, bluish purple pants, mm -hmm. yeah, blue, yeah. Uh, we're, they're gray now. And so we um, so and there's a pair of pants for for every every player. And they also accommodate a belt, which is a nice advantage yes. to the new pants. Absolutely. All right, uh, Chris Zamen, if you have a question. Sure, uh, I've got a couple of them actually. Sure. Uh, so one is where do we find the screening tool? Great question. We need to put that up on the website. Um, it is on the government website, but we'll provide a direct link on our GMBA website. Perfect. And will we have to show proof that we've done that screen? Do we know that yet? No, we will not have to show proof. Uh, it'll be sort of on, on the honor system. We are going to ask that our, our conveners and our coaches do sort of remind families to do it. Um, and this is part of the, the responsibility of, of us as citizens, right, to make sure that we're keeping everybody safe. Um, the only thing that we need is sort of the, the form is set up for one family contact to put down their, their main contact, and then they can list other family members who are attending the event to the game or practice. So it's sort of, you do it once for your family, but it's every event that you attend will have to fill out a new entry. Okay. And then my last question is just at what age can my child complete their, that the attendance sheet? So mine is 15. Can he complete it? Do I still have to come and complete that form? So it's for anybody who's at the event. So we need we need a contact. So you could be the contact for your your fifteen year old son. Um, that would be fine. But we still need the record of who's in attendance. Right. right? But so can can he complete that as the main contact? That's fine. If you want your son to list himself as the main contact, they will be the person that's contacted by public health. So we're encouraging it to be an adult. Um, but again, it doesn't necessarily have to. I believe oh. Jeff. Am I wrong with that? I, it's an interesting question. Yeah, we don't. There's not real guidelines around that. That in particular, but yeah, you want to be somebody who could, who who has an email or a phone number that public health can get a hold of and, and follow up with appropriate, you know, quite quickly. Right. So, so I guess my question then is, can my 15 year old, if it's an attendance, I won't physically be there. So, can he put his name as being there, but my name as the contact? Is that how that works? Yeah, you, you list yourself as the main yeah. contact, and then he'll be the name of the player who or the person who attended the event. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for helping us clarify, right? This is all new for us as well. So I definitely appreciate these questions. Oh, I see something in the chat. Uh, question about helmets from Leanne. Uh, options for helmets, definitely always going to be a challenge. Um, I would suggest a couple different options. If you have Canadian Tire, uh, does have a selection. Sport Check does. You may be even able to get something from National Sport. Um, they are going out of business. There's huge sales there. Not that I'm advertising for anybody. I should qualify that. And we also have Hometown Sports as, as one of our, our partners as well, who has a huge selection of helmets as well. Um, so yes, getting them will be sort of a bit of an obstacle. Um, we're hoping that as we progress, um, things start to open up a little bit more and makes it a little bit easier for our families to get those. I think there's sort of, and Leanne's asking about sort of size and fit there. There's generally two sizes, a youth and an, and a, an adult helmet. So, um, uh, Michelle S., you have a question. Hi, yes, thank you. So we're new to baseball. This will be our first year, you know, with the boys uh, doing baseball. So we have just some, I guess, I guess, basic equipment questions. Where do we buy socks that they can wear for baseball? And um, we're trying to find like the, the cup for them to use for when they're playing. And all I could find were hockey cups. So that's what I bought back in May. So is that okay? Absolutely. Great, great questions for, from a first time baseball parent. Um, yeah, absolutely. Socks, uh, we can get anywhere. Soccer socks work. Um, okay. Regular athletic socks work just fine as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be a specific baseball sock, um, but they are available at, at all the stores I listed as well. If you were looking for that particular baseball sock, uh, you can also try Amazon or any retailer online. Um, okay. In terms of an athletic supporter, a jock or a Jill, uh, that, yes, many, many, many players use hockey jocks as well. Um, so it doesn't have to be a specific baseball um, 
one. It can be any sort of athletic supporter with a cup. Okay, thank you. And one final question. I did ask in the chat about the bat. We yep. bought a T-ball, like, is it Rawlings yep. bat a while back? And now is that okay for six under and eight under to use? Or does my eight under player need uh, like an actual bat? Each team will be given a, a couple bats to use um, that they can be cycled through. They will be wiped down in between use. Um, we are encouraging coaches to grab the barrel and, and not touch the handle as they pick them up, um, but they can also be wiped down in between use. So there will be some team bats available. Uh, my recommendation the for the 8U uh, mm -hmm. would probably be, if you want to, you can reach out to GMBA. We have extra bats, um, but probably not the best idea to be using a T-ball bat at 8U. Um, the 6U player should be fine with that t-ball bat okay wonderful thank you so much no problem uh so in the chat going there um jamie's asking what's the difference between spring training and team training and rally cap uh great question so spring training is sort of just our, our as gmba's opportunity to get kids out on the field quickly so sometimes it, it some divisions it may be actual actually with your team other divisions it may be just a random group of nine eight players, nine players, and one or two coaches. So it's just an opportunity to get our players on the field quickly if we need to. Um, the team training will be that, just that. It'll be teams working together. Rally Cap is a program that we run in GMBA. It's actually a Baseball Canada program. Um, and it is for, in, in Guelph, we run it for our five U divisions so or four and five year olds. And it is a skill-based program only. So they don't play a typical game like you would see. And we continue some of the elements of that rally cap program into our 6U division, where we call it 6U is rally cap T-ball. So some of the evaluation and the skill progressions continue through um, into the 6U division. And then once we hit 7U, it becomes more and more like baseball. Um, we do have pitching machines that we use at 7, 8, and 9U. And then we get into pitching at um, 10U and above. Um, going on, any recommendations on bats, types, and sizes? Andrew, if you want to reach out to House League or your convener or coach, please feel free. If you want to send me an, an email, I will gladly talk to you for hours about bats. Um, so yeah, I can walk you through a whole bunch of different things in my opinion. There's also lots of tools online to do um, bat recommendations. Uh, Amy says, do you anticipate any limits rules for spectators? What I, I'll speak here sort of without Steph as our guru in um, the public health sector and Jeff and Rob, if you guys want to jump in as well. Um, and my anticipation for limits around spectators, they will be tied to gathering limits. I think our players are going to be separate from our actual gathering limits. So what that actually looks like, we're not 100% sure, but I'm going to anticipate that some of our, our spectator limits are going to be tied to whatever our gathering limits are. Jeff, Rob, do you have anything you want to add for that spectator piece? Uh, yeah, I can jump in, Adam. No, I think I think that's right, Adam. And, and Amy, we're obviously we're not really sure what's going to happen in sort of stage one, stage two. Uh, we expect those limits to to expand as you know as numbers get get better and public health is comfortable. So um, I think on that one, yeah, stay tuned. And once we have more information, um, it sounds like that information might be coming sooner rather than later. So we hope so too. Um, so stay tuned, and we'll communicate. Um, you know, what we learn as soon as we can. Yeah, and, and the and the piece around rules, I think the one rule that we know for sure, because it's in the it's in the OVA Baseball Ontario protocols, um, is this piece around social distancing. And so that'll be there, I think, throughout throughout the whole season. So um, you know, whatever the, the limits of people, I think that the trying to use all that the, all the space we've got on a baseball field to, to spread out is is the other piece that I think you'll see um, as part of a, as part of those you it is is it's really clear in those uh, return to sport protocols. Awesome. It seems like our, our chats are, are winding down. Again, we are here to support you. Any questions that you have, um, there's a whole bunch of e emails that you can send to. Please feel free to uh, reach out. Becky, I'll get to you in one second. Um, so reach out, houseleague at gmba.ca, uh, office at gmba.ca, um, any one of the commissioners. Um, th there's a whole bunch of emails. Just reach out and ask, and if it's not the right person, we'll put you in contact with the right person. Uh, Becky, your question. 
Um, so I actually have two questions, both specific for RowdyCap. Um, one, because you had said that you were going to extend the baseball season. So I just want to confirm that that means that RowdyCap will get its full 10 weeks in? That's our plan, yep, to still be a 10-week program. Awesome. And the other is, will the rally cap kids need to be wearing face masks at all times? Or will they be able to take them off when actually being active? So, for, and, and it's, it's, a good, it's a great question. It applies to all of our players um, anytime they are in close contact. So what that's been described to us by Biz Ontario is anytime they are sitting on the bench, um, or anytime they're being held on or they're holding a runner on at first base. In rally cap, neither of those things happen. Um, you may, towards the end of the season, have players sit on the bench. That would be a time when they're required to wear a face mask. But for predominantly, they will be socially distanced on the field. Um, they will be moving around, and they will not be required to wear a face mask. Great, thanks. No problem. Um, Solda, you have a question. Sorry, once, yeah, sorry. Um, so they have to wear it when they're up to bat, I believe, right? No nope, players need do not on. need to wear it when they're batting. Okay, but they have to wear it at first base, so that's where it's confusing. So, uh, yeah, tell me about it. We went through this too. Um, the only field, it's only the fielder. So the first baseman is the only fielder who is required to wear a face mask. And this is required. Anybody at any point can wear a face mask. But the only requirement is if you have a first baseman who is holding on a runner. So at a lot of our younger divisions, when we don't have leadoffs, we don't have first baseman holding on the runner. So that is not a requirement. If the player wants to, they are more than welcome to. Um, so that's sort of the, the one OBA change that's happened is um, the, in allowing leadoffs. So we're talking at, at our um, 13 U and above divisions. Uh, if we are going to hold on the runner, then the first baseman will need a mask, a face mask. And the runner does not need one at any point, and it is only at first base. So a follow-up to that is, so catchers and umpires do not need to wear masks? Umpires do need to wear face masks um, if they are going behind the plate. Um, and this year, it is 100% up to the individual umpire if they would like to uh, go behind the plate. But if they do, they must wear a a face mask that is not the protective face mask. It is like an actual, what we're wearing around face mask. It's hard to say what that one is. Um, so they have to have protection over their face uh, as an umpire. Catchers do not. Oh, just because like they're close to the umpire and they're also close to the batter. So I was just curious why, like it would make sense for the batter to wear it. I don't know. Sorry. I, I understand. These are the, the protocols that are put in place by Baseball Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, so again, players are always more than welcome to wear one um, at any point, but the only requirement is a fielder holding on a runner at first base. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, going back into the chat, I see a question from Karen. Will all the team practices be on the same field? Um, we do have sort of a, a diamond matrix assigned for teams. Um, once we get into the actual team practice piece, that will be on the same field every week. Um, and hopefully our numbers will increase to the point where um, it's not an issue with only being able to be in the infield or the outfield for that week. So yes, we do have assigned um, fields for our practices. It will remain constant for that same team throughout the season. It will be the same night. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, Flannery has a question. Oh, uh, yes. I'd just like to thank you guys all for tonight's meeting as well. Um, but just a question, uh, rally caps uh, in the past, you know, parent involvement there. So just wondering, you know, how that would work and if that's going to be going again. Absolutely. We are going to continue to encourage our parent involvement. Um, and what we've done for the rally cap program is just increase the distance, right? So um, socially distancing between parent and child um, and spreading them out as they progress through the skills and the drills that we do at the rally cap. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, 
Anne's asking about umpire training uh, for new umpires. So there was, I'm, I'm not sure if it's sort of a brand new umpire or somebody who has completed the umpire modules online. Um, so there were umpire modules online this year as there were last year. Uh, there will be a meeting for umpires as we approach the season. That information should be coming out soon. Um, it'll come out from me as well. Um, but uh, so there will be some stuff there. In terms of additional training, it's a little difficult in the COVID world. So we've been trying to figure out how um, we are going to provide assistance to our umpire. One of the things we will be doing is some mentorship evaluation. Um, but again, uh, they will if at any point they can feel free to reach out to, it'll end up with me, but it's the UIC at gmba.ca. Um, so is it too late to do the modules? That would be a, a question for um, our umpire assigner. I, I don't think so, but don't quote me on that. Um, so there may be a way to get um, a, a young umpire who's still interested into the system. Email uh, either UIC or umpire and I will put you in touch or any one of the addresses and we'll put you in touch with what you need. Um, do four and five year olds need helmets? Strongly, strongly, strongly encouraged. Um, we do do batting. We want to get them used to that that concept, wearing a helmet, um, and it's a safety piece. There are baseballs that are flying all over the place in that, um, and at times we want to make sure that we protect our kids. So yes, strongly, strongly encourage that um, all of our players in GMBA wear a helmet. Um, it is mandatory above four and five, or above the five U division, but it's strongly encouraged there. Um, will the older ages have a year-end tournament? Um, we're working on it. Uh, we're trying to figure out ways to get the most baseball in to, to provide it. Um, we did have, we do have it as part of our, our budget. So we're probably looking at Labor Day weekend for, um, it may not be a, the same tournament style we're used to in the past, um, but you can probably expect at the older ages to have um, some form of baseball over the Labor Day weekend, if we have enough players, if we have um, the ability to do that. So. Um, kind of a half answer, Morgan, sorry about that. But yeah, there will be sort of year end tournament style, I will say games as, as we progress through um, the, the season. Um, Chris. Yep, sorry, just talking about tournaments. Uh, it, uh, something just popped into my mind. So in the um, government's plan, their three-step plan, uh, currently in step one, there are no games permitted. Uh, mm -hmm. Step two, I don't believe there's games permitted either. So if that's the case, how does that work for us in baseball? Are we ignoring that or found a workaround for that? Or what does that look like? No, nope, we fully intend on following the, the protocols. Uh, we've actually reached out to, to local MPPs to get clarification on that. Jeff, do you want to speak about that? You're the one who had that conversation. Do you want to speak specifically about what our plan is for that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great question, Chris. Um, so our plan right now is that we expect to be able to play games in phase two. But that's not 100% confirmed, but that is our expectation right now. Uh, as you as you look at the the, and the as you know the, the the roadmap to reopening is is kind of vague when you get to stage two and stage three. Government uh, has told us that's done on purpose because they don't actually know what their plan is just yet because there's so many factors that they're going to take into consideration when it comes to uh, uh, making you know what what it actually looks like. Sure. So there's two 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 pieces there uh, in in stage two or phase two. Uh, first one says is sports leagues resume. That's what it says. And then there's another piece there around uh, there's gathering limits of 25 or less. Yeah. Um, we anticipate that the 25 or less is going to be, um, and what we've been told to expect is that's going to be related to individual gatherings and that uh, the sports leagues resuming um, in that phase two, which I think the government's targeting, if nothing changes for July 5th, would be that we could we could start playing games at that point in time. So that's what our plan is right now, Chris. Okay. Um, of course, that changes. We'll adjust as well. That's something that we got really, we've gotten really good at here. Um, that's how we've that's how we've planned out the season at this point. Sure. Okay. And, and so when it says that it's for training only, uh, and there are no games, so uh, GMBA considers two teams getting together would be a game, correct? Yeah. Yeah. What you'll see in the training phase in phase one is one team on a diamond practicing because it's it. Um, 
uh, and that team sort of split in half for training. Okay. So half the team in the infield, so five players, six players, three coaches, two, three coaches, and then and in the outfield, the other half of the team and the other uh, sure. you know, coaches as well. That's how, okay. we'll, that's how we'll work within the, the, the group's of 10 limit um, and to train um, as we get ready for the season. Cool. Thank you. Coming back into the chat, how are numbers? Have you had a lot of kids sign up? Um, we're, we're looking at about 70% capacity. What you've seen is we've closed our registration. Um, and the reason why we've done that is so that we can plan. So we are currently admitting players onto wait lists. So for divisions where we can't, can add enough to facilitate another team or a rebalance, we will let those in in the coming days as we lead into the start of the season. Um, so that's why we have closed sort of the registration. So it's it's closed but it's not closed as we accept people on the waiting list and we get if we get enough interest we will allow a group in to, to support our, our players um, so overall we're probably about 70 75 percent um of our expected of our of our capacity so it's not bad um considering the circumstances i think that's really good so we are planning on going ahead for most divisions and i'll say most because there are a few that there's a few that are more and some that are less we are looking at having six teams participate so again, that's why we have these plans, depending on what the sports leagues break out to. Is it a 50 player bubble, stuff like that. So we have various different plans that we're, we're working, we're willing to operate under. Um, again, we're just waiting for clarification on what it's going to look like as we open. Um, question, if we signed up in February and now considering waiting until next year, who do we contact? Simply send an email to registration at gmba.ca um, and they will walk you through the process um, if you want to wait until next year. So, oh, Heather, you have a question. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, well, not Heather, that's my wife's account, but Jeremy <laughs> here. Um, <All> right. <laughs> my question is, um, and I think you touched on it, but it's around like, uh, like I, my, my, uh, my son played select last year and they had like, uh, they only played like two other teams because there was like a 50 pl uh, player maximum or 50 person maximum or something like that. Is that the the idea that'll happen as well in house league if it if it's 50 is the max then it'll be like if there's eight teams in, in his division they're going to split into only playing a couple teams or yeah that that's the plan right so if we have to maintain the the, the groups of 50 is, is the parameters that we worked in uh last year um we'll find ways of, of doing that uh typically our teams run about 12 to 13 players which would let us do groups of four teams as i said we have typically six six teams in each division. So we'll probably be splitting them up into groups of three and they'll play that way. New this year, however, there is the ability to break that group um, if you have a week off. So you go into a week of training. So that's an option that we might look at for the house league program. So you can play for three weeks, take a week off and only do training within your individual team. Um, and then you could join in a different group and we can mix up the teams that way. So that's something that we are thinking about, but again, we're, we're hoping we don't have to. We're hoping we open as a sports league and are able to just do our 16s, 18s, however many we have. Right, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. All right, and again, it seems we're, we're dying down again. Again, we can stay on and answer questions all night. If you think of something tonight, later, tomorrow, um, and you're not sure and you want to ask, please reach out. Um, we want to make sure that our families are comfortable with uh, baseball and Guelph and the programs that we're intending to offer. So please reach out to us at any point. If you have any questions, feel free. Um, our, our contact information is all over the GMBA website. Um, it's part of this PowerPoint that we shared. This meeting is being recorded, so you can, you can check back in there to get them as well. Um, thank you so much. I mean, there, there's a lot that's going to be put on families, and, and we're, we're hoping to have a great season as much as much baseball as we can get in between um, the open and, and we'll go right to Labor Day as best we can. So if, again, it, thank you for everyone who participates for signing up in, for GMBA. Um, we look forward to having a great season this year.